Hello everyone, I hope you hear me well. Sorry I had some uh, technology <laughs> issues today. So um, I'm Rachel from the Spiders Adventure and welcome to this uh, live series on my Arctic Thousand expedition. So if I chose to go live today, it's uh, because um, it putting me, it's putting me really far away from my comfort zone and um, because I'm not used to the life and uh, I mean it's all new for me and I think we all uh, in these quite tormented times uh, are put off our comfort zone and um, also it's because I believe that now we are kind of shedding layers and um, becoming more authentic so you won't find any fancy videos today it's just me talking about my experience uh, sharing this story of my expedition and um, so yeah I, I just want to, to do nothing like perfect video nothing fancy but just me uh, sharing on a very human basis what happened to me throughout the past year um, actually you know I finished this expedition a bit shorter than planned and um, I was like how can I share how can I make the most of it now that everybody's kind of locked in at home or in the very awkward conditions or situation? And um, I realized that dealing with uncomfortable situation and uh, going through or going through the unknown or facing fears, whether they are real or unreal, is what I've been doing for many years. Every time I set off on a new expedition, on a new travel or solo adventure. And uh, so maybe my story, just by sharing how I do it, how I jump into the, the mix of the unknown, can inspire uh, or maybe just bring some light into your life now. So it's nothing about um, what I can call a masterclass, it's just about telling a story, my story, my experience. Uh, as a woman adventurer or explorer. So let's start from the beginning because um, as you of course know such a big big adventure I'm sorry I'm just checking my cheat sheet here um, an adventure like Arctic Thousand doesn't start uh, at the beginning of the expedition itself these three four weeks on ski through Lapland um, it started much earlier and I think I have to share with you the, the global story, the whole of it, because that's what really gives a sense to it and yeah, bring really meaning to what I've done and can inspire, inspire you for more. So I came up with the idea about a year ago after finishing the Rovaniemi 300. It's this Arctic race in the northern Finland, in the Rovaniemi. Um, I was doing it for the second time and I said, well, now I want to go back there because I love Finland so much. I want to go back there and really enjoy um, or feel the country more and spend more time and do it my own way. So I came up with this idea of doing a thousand kilometers on ski and on foot across Lapland in winter. Uh, I love solo adventure a lot. And um, even if I miss my pets, you know, Spartanix, Miloen, Ola, um, I, I really wanted to do something solo and see if I could do it, um, you know, wakening inside of me all these resources I have. And so when I started speaking about it, uh, don't think that people are just like, yeah, go, go for it. Um, mainly I was faced by people's fear and doubt about the whole thing because I mean, telling people you're going to do a thousand kilometers on your own out there for one month it's like you're crazy it's going to cost money and and so on so there were very few to support me unconditionally and they know who they are so I, I have to thank them uh, by the way right now um, so the I had at the beginning I was really mainly alone uh, working on this project and I would say for many months it was hard because there were nothing really tangible. I was just starting to plan, getting ideas uh, about the route, how I would do it, 
how I could implement the whole thing. But I, went, I was alone there, so it was kind of a, a long, solo, lonely road. And um, little happened. So I believe that now looking back, it's one of the hardest part of the whole adventure. Is this this beginning where nothing much is happening and it takes time to to get momentum. Um, so despite it all, I kept going and step by step the project took um, yeah some some reality becomes more real. And also I started talking about it because I thought that the more I was talking about it, the more I was committed to it. And uh, even if I had doubts, because believe me, I had thousands of doubts. So I kept on and I talk about it and more people talk about it and ask me for interviews and things. So I was like, okay, now Rage, you have to go and you can't let down just because it's, it seems huge and so difficult. Um, and the major step in all this is the trip I did in June, where I came over here to Finland with the Spartanics and Milwin. Uh, we came out by car and I wanted to see the places I would go through, meet people, make contacts here. I mean, feel the country, feel, um, feel where I was going to be alone and how it's going to be. So, yeah, I came here. And that was really the crucial step, because I was like, yes, I can do this. I mean, it's not uh, something hairy-fairy, it's real. So I have a good good chance to, to, to do it for real. Um, and then I had another idea, because I can never stop at the first one. And this bigger idea was to spend the whole winter in Finland, just not like two months like one month's preparation and one month expedition and then go back to Switzerland. Like, no, I can spend maybe more time over there. And if so, then I need to bring the whole tribe. Meaning not only my dogs and cats, but also Ola, my horse. And so then I was faced with other people's fear and doubts about you're going to bring your horse to Finland. It's 3,000 kilometers away from Switzerland. And, um, well, actually, the more people tell me something is not doable, the more I want to do. So that's how I set off um, really putting in place all the pieces and trying to make contacts for Ola, getting um, to find a home here in Rovaniemi. And believe me, Rovaniem in winter is not easy to uh, to find um, a flat to rent for such a long time at a very good price. But um, but you know, I knew I could do it. And um, bit by bit, as soon as I was really um, convinced that I could do it and I wanted to bring all my pets and all out here, uh, things starting to get into place. Uh, all the pieces went together. I found an amazing place to stay. Um, my landlord is amazing and now he's becoming a friend because he's someone amazing. Uh, I was also so lucky to find a great place for Ola. And um, everything was like going with a certain flow. And still if I had doubts and I was not really sure of some things and I had fear regarding the travel, you know, like, Traveling with about 300, 3,000, sorry, kilometers with a horse, it, I mean, it doesn't seem so easy. But in the end, it was fairly easy. It's been just amazing. The journey up here was kind of magical. It was an adventure in itself. And, um, I mean, it went really so well. It worked out much better than I could even have thought of and planned. Um, I had some close people, relatives and friends who really believed in me and helped me uh, make it come true. I was so lucky to be supported by my husband who always believed in my project, however crazy they are, and find solution on the technical side which I'm not so much into. And then I met amazing people here in Finland, in Rovaniemi, which is my heart country, my love country. Um, and they also helped me make this old project come true. 
so what I want to share with you about all this is that if I had not there to really step into what I felt and I felt this calling for um, this project for making it happen this winter not another winter or in like whenever condition will align and will be easy if I had not dared to set everything in motion nothing would have happened I mean I would still be in Switzerland wondering uh, what I could do with my life and uh, whether or not I was ready to be an adventurer or an explorer so it was more than just believing in what I wanted to do or could do it was more about listening to this calling inside me that was like go try try do it I mean um, believe in yourself and stand up for yourself and uh, in a way it all proves me right because now I'm kind of stuck if I can say stuck in Finland because nobody can be stuck in Finland I mean this is a dream country so it's more like okay I can't go home and I can't see my pets and I can't see my family but now I'm stuck here and um, and there's no better country to be stuck in in such winter I'm not I don't have to stay home and I uh, can still enjoy some freedom. So, yes, in the end, I was really right to come here this winter. And um, my pets are fine and safe in Switzerland, and Ola is with me, so I don't have to worry about that. And so, for all these reasons, um, having set Arctic 1000 into motion and all that happened during the year. Um, all the speeches I had to give, the people I met, um, all the the fears I've overcome, the obstacles I've overcome, um, all this make this expedition a success, even before it started. And that's something I believe I really take of the old expedition, um, whatever happened next, is that I was so right because all the events it made me. Uh, it made me come to live and uh, the people I, I had the chance to meet is something, I mean it's a gift, it's something so valuable, it's so worth it, all the, the fears and all the, the doubts I, you had to overcome to become an adventurer. Um, so this is it, I believe that this expedition was already a success even before it started. I imagine I've been able to bring the dogs back and Milwin, my cat, by plane. I thought I would never fly with my dogs and cat because that was like unimaginable. Oh, I don't know the word. Well, something you just can't do uh, because it's so complicated. And actually it went easy. And only much later, uh, all the borders were closed. But at that time I could still fly home and bring them back. And everything went so well. Um, so that's how I believe some things are meant to happen and um, this expedition was meant to happen. And then came another level of um, adventure, the start of the expedition itself. But that would be for, that will be for another live video because I want to keep them short and to keep you um, motivated to follow them. So. Uh, in the next video, I will share with you the, the beginning of the expeditions and uh, how, what, how was a typical day for me and what it meant to spend hours and hours on ski every day by really low temperatures. So stay tuned. Uh, I'll be posting the date uh, shortly enough so you'll know when the next live video will be. And... Um, Soon enough, I'll start the French video, which is much more scary for me. So thanks everyone for tuning in, for coming in and joining me live. And sorry for all the mishap in this video. Have a great day. Love. Bye.